This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 886, 10 Ways to Get Healthy Sleep Naturally, by Dr. Alana Miller of zenpsychiatry.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Happy Monday and welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily, where I act as your narrator of the best health and fitness blogs, all for free. I cover fitness, diet and nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors. And then on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. And thank you to sizzlefish.com for sponsoring this episode. I can get a craving for lobster tail, but sometimes it's not easy to find great quality seafood locally. Sizzlefish.com delivers pure, natural seafood responsibly right to my door with fast and free shipping. They have everything from shrimp to calamari, sea bass, salmon, and a lot more. If you are interested in great tasting, healthy fish and seafood, check out sizzlefish.com today. Plus, as an exclusive deal for being a listener, you can use discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. That's discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. Now, it's the holidays, which is my favorite time of year. And last year, I did a bit of holiday trivia between December 1st and December 25th. And I received some wonderful feedback, so I'm continuing that trend this year. So if you listen to any episodes from last week, well, except Wednesday, that's when I gave my usual inspirational quote, but any other episode last week, and I was talking about some holiday trivia. So let's continue that trend here. Here is today's holiday trivia. How fast would Santa's sleigh have to travel to deliver presents to all the children in the world? Now, some physicist actually calculated this. Now, it's estimated that he would have to deliver presents to about 700 million children and he would have to spend about 31 hours going around the globe, and in order to do that, he would have to go 6 million miles per hour. This is according to Dr. Katie Sheen, a physicist from Exeter University. Basically, his reindeer would have to break the sound barrier. All right, with that, let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. 10 Ways to Get Healthy Sleep Naturally by Dr. Alana Miller of zenpsychiatry.com. How many of us work long, stressful days and then come home with almost no time to wind down before we're supposed to go to bed? Or sit in front of our computers well into the evening? Or need coffee to wake up in the morning and sleeping pills to fall asleep at night? Many factors have converged to create an epidemic of poor sleep in this country. We consume stimulants, spend too much time in front of screens, and have ambitions about what we want to accomplish in our days that exceed the time we have to do it. We spend most of our time indoors, exposed to artificial light, and disconnected from the natural rhythms of nature. But sleep is important. Really, really important. Insufficient sleep, which basically means less than 7 to 9 hours a night for an adult, depending on the individual, is associated with a whole host of problems, including traffic accidents, poor memory and learning, weight gain, a weakened immune system, and deficient production of neurotransmitters necessary for a healthy mood. And terrifyingly, a recent study found that long-term use of the most commonly prescribed class of sleep medications, the sedative hypnotics, including zolpidem, zaloplon, and benzodiazepines such as temazepam, were associated with an increased risk of cancer and death not explained by sicker people getting more prescriptions. It is also well established that benzodiazepines impair learning and memory. If you want to stay away from the meds and still get a good night's rest, here are some safe, effective ways you can improve your sleep naturally. 1. Make the bedroom a relaxing place that you associate with sleep. Use the bed only for sleep and and not for watching TV, using your computer, or even reading. Keep the room cool and make your bed comfortable. If you're tossing and turning, get up and do something else relaxing until you get tired again. You don't want to associate the bed with anticipatory anxiety about not being able to sleep. Two, create a calming evening ritual. An hour or two before you go to bed, dim the lights, turn off the computer screen, and do something relaxing to wind down. Take a bath, light some candles, write in your journal, or read a novel, just not in bed. Practice fun, relaxing, and peaceful activities you want to train your body to wind down as it's getting close to bedtime. Three, maintain a regular sleep schedule. It's very common to get up early during the week and then sleep in on the weekends, but this habit can actually impair your sleep. 
When you sleep in, you won't get tired until later that night. And then when Monday morning rolls around and you have to get up early for work again, you're already sleep deprived. Instead, on the weekend, try to wake up within an hour of when you normally would. Four, cut out stimulants. Yes, I know you love your coffee, but if insomnia is a chronic problem, you should seriously consider completely eliminating caffeine. Some people are more sensitive to its effects than others and may feel wired into the evening, even if they only drank a cup or two in the morning. If you're unsure if coffee is impacting your sleep, do an experiment and cut it out for a month and see how you feel. You may be surprised to find this completely solves the problem. Five, get out into nature. Nothing will help reset your circadian rhythm better than connecting with the natural cycles of dawn, daylight, dusk, and dark. Go outside during the day, do something active, and get lots of natural light exposure, especially in the morning. When evening comes around, enjoy it. Watch the sunset, dim your lights, and let night be night. An hour or so before bed, go outside and sit quietly in the dark under the stars for 10 minutes. Six, try meditation. Mindfulness is a wonderful practice for learning how to slow down and calm your mind. I recommend sitting for five to 10 minutes in the morning to help start your day and five to 10 minutes in the evening as you're starting to wind down. Sit in a comfortable position and let your attention rest on your breath. When your mind wanders, gently note wandering or thinking and bring your attention back to the breath. If you have a tendency toward anxiety, it can be helpful to write down all your worries before you meditate. Seven, get exercise early in the day. 20 to 30 minutes of daily aerobic activity can help improve sleep. It doesn't matter what kind of exercise you're doing as long as you're getting out and moving around. Try to keep your exercise sessions to the morning, midday, or afternoon though because strenuous exercise at night can impair sleep. Eight, avoid alcohol right before bed. I know that many people have a drink or two to help wind down and fall asleep, but the problem is that alcohol impairs REM sleep, as well as the deeper restorative stages of sleep. You may fall asleep, but find you wake up through the night and don't feel rested in the morning. If sleep is a problem, try cutting out alcohol for a bit and see if it helps. Nine, if you need a little help, try natural herbs. Kava, valerian root, chamomile, passionflower, lavender, and lemon balm can all help promote relaxation and good sleep although kava has been associated in rare cases with liver failure, so check with your doctor if you have liver problems. These herbs can be taken as capsules, tinctures, or teas, and lavender and lemon balm can be used as aromatherapy. And 10, try cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, for insomnia. If all else fails, CBT for insomnia is a brief, extremely effective therapy that can resolve chronic insomnia in a few months of weekly sessions. So the basic procedure is one, create a sleep journal to evaluate your sleep habits. Two, determine how many hours of quality sleep you get a night minus waking up and tossing and turning. Three, create a schedule where you go to sleep very late and wake up very early so that you are only sleeping this many hours a night. For example, bedtime at 2 a.m., wake up at 6 a.m. Oh, and no napping. And four, gradually extend this time as you consolidate your sleep and are better able to fall asleep and stay asleep during the designated time. Make sure to find a therapist who is experienced with cognitive behavioral therapy and has done this type of therapy for insomnia before. Or, if you are motivated, you can do the regimen yourself following a book or online guide. I hope these tips help you on your quest for better sleep. Remember that sleep is crucial for healthy functioning, and bad sleep can be an indicator that there is something in your life that needs to be changed or attended to. There may be a medical problem that needs to be addressed, or psychological distress that needs attention or anxiety and worry that's been created by a too hectic lifestyle. Let sleep be your canary in the coal mine and listen to its wisdom. You just listened to the post titled 10 Ways to Get Healthy Sleep Naturally by Dr. Ilana Miller of zenpsychiatry.com. And thank you again to sizzlefish.com for sponsoring this episode. Perfect if you're looking to increase your omega-3 intake. Health experts recommend two or more servings of fish and seafood every week, yet it's been reported that nearly 90% of Americans aren't eating enough seafood. You can purchase items from sizzlefish.com whenever you want, or choose to receive a subscription box each month so you don't forget. And sizzlefish.com has great variety. Check it out and see for yourself. Sizzlefish.com delivers pure, natural seafood responsibly right to my door with fast and free shipping. 
and the pricing is actually reasonable. They have everything from shrimp to calamari, sea bass, salmon, and a lot more. If you're interested in great tasting, healthy fish and seafood, check out sizzlefish.com today. Plus, as an exclusive deal for being a listener, you can use discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. That's discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Now, last week, I read to you a couple of posts about exercise and how whenever you can fit exercise in your day, that's fine. But notice today, tip number seven said, try and get exercise earlier in the day if you can. Strenuous exercise at night might impair sleep. And so you might be thinking, well, which one is it, Dr. Neil? It seems like you're contradicting yourself. Well, actually, the most important thing, as I always say, is know what works well for you. There are folks out there who can do strenuous exercise before bed and feel perfectly fine. They fall asleep, no problem. But there are others that are more sensitive. They may wake up after strenuous exercise and find it really difficult to fall asleep. So as I always say on this show, find what works for you. If before bed is the only time you can exercise and it doesn't affect your sleep, do it. But if you find it does mess with your sleep cycle, then maybe try and find another time, maybe two hours before bed or three hours before bed if you can do it. I know for me, exercising like right before bed isn't ideal because by that time, I'm exhausted from the day and there's no way a workout's gonna happen. So I actually schedule my exercise in my calendar earlier in the day so that nobody can schedule a meeting at that time. I block off that time so I'm not gonna check emails or work on other projects. It is my exercise time. And other things I like to do when it comes to getting good sleep I've started creating an evening ritual. When I'm starting to get ready for bed, just as Dr. Miller described, I created an evening ritual where I start to dim the lights, I start to turn off my screens, my television, things like that. I open a book. That way, I'm getting my body prepared for this. And if you do it long enough and consistently enough, your body will start to respond to this ritual. It's like it knows what's coming, that, oh, lights are dimming, it's time for sleep. All right, that'll do it for me for today. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here every day. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. Have a great rest of your Monday and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.